Author Donna J. Johnhan presents The Christmas Box Set Number 2. If you have not yet listened to Donna's 12 Days of Christmas Box Set Number 1, then you owe it to yourself to do so. This box set is made of 12 wonderful stories for the Christmas holiday season. They are all filled with mystery, suspense, and they all have happy endings. Now, Donna presents her second 12 Days of Christmas box set, 12 stories with wild imaginings. Donna paints pictures of hope, peace, and a bright future for the world. She develops amazing stories that will warm and thrill the hearts of the listener. Sit back now and enjoy Donna's 12 stories. You can email your thoughts and feedback to Donna at donnajothan at gmail.com. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everyone. Ho, 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 everybody. It is the Christmas holiday season, and I am Donna J. Jodhan, your host for the 12 Days of Christmas box set number two. I have already recorded box set number one, and this is the 12th and final episode of my 12 Days of Box Set number two. I hope that everybody is enjoying their holiday season, sharing, greeting, receiving, giving, sharing peace, love and joy in this very troubled world, and just doing our little bit to make things a little better in our corner of the world. So we're up to episode 12. And I hope that you have at least had a chance to listen to at least one of my episodes. Okay? I have enjoyed bringing them to you. And I'm just going to give you the titles of them again. So that you could go off and listen to them. Alright? So here goes. The first one was Santa's Special Christmas Sleigh. The second was the President's Christmas packages. Number three was Santa's Super Christmas Kids. Number four was Santa's Magic Marvels. The fifth was the President's Christmas Ice Palace. The sixth and probably my favorite was Santa's Super Christmas Dream. The seventh was Santa's Super Sea Rescue. The eighth was the President's Christmas Cruise. The ninth was Santa's Super Christmas Cradle. Number ten was the President's Christmas Royal Rescue. The eleventh was Santa's Christmas Train Trip. And now for the final episode. Here we go. Santa's Gifts to girls and boys. And here is a description. Santa has always wanted to make sure that girls and boys receive the gifts that they wish for and that they desire. It's not just about toys and technology. It is about so much more at this time of the year. Santa calls an emergency meeting of friends family, elves, helpers, and special team. However, he manages to hold this meeting in great secrecy because he has discovered that some folks out there are planning to stop this secret meeting and they're hoping to stop the secret meeting. These Folks are determined to stop Santa from achieving his goals. But, of course, Santa wins in the end. But not having had to come up with ways to thwart his enemies. Find out what Santa and friends and family and everybody else close to Santa needs to do in order to accomplish this great mission. And so now we are ready. Part 1. Santa calls an emergency meeting. 
Santa has been reflecting on how he could make this year's Christmas one with a bit of difference. He keeps telling everybody that it's not just about toys and technology. It needs to be much more than this. And he also strongly believes that Christmas is not just for little girls and little boys. Christmas is for everyone. He has wonderful friends, family, and helpers around him. And they are always ready to be a part of any and all of Santa's missions. It is a late summer's evening and Santa, Mrs. Claus, I, along with their fr dogs, Yelly and Hinch, are enjoying a twilight evening on their back deck. The Clauses have turned off their phones and they have instructed their staff not to disturb them unless it is a dire emergency. Santa is very, very proud of himself this evening because he prepared a sumptuous barbecue for himself and Mrs. Claus all by himself. However, Mrs. Claus snuck in one of her famous icebox cakes. Santa barbecued ribs and steaks, made a creamy potato salad and a green salad, and made fresh, cool cocktails. Yelly and Hinch have had their dinner and are now relaxing out in the backyard garden. Ah, yes, peaceful, quiet, and all is well in Santa's land. But Santa knows that this will probably not last for too long. And he is bang on the money. If he decides to leaf through some mail that was left for him to review, and he soon comes across a letter from someone very important. Santa hurriedly opens this letter and reads quickly. Then he passes it over to his wife who reads it and passes it back to her husband while looking over at him. In short, the letter contains a request from the Pope and is signed not just by the Pope but also it is signed by some very high profile billionaires from around the world. And what is this letter all about? Well, the Pope and his friends are asking Santa to make this ho Christmas holiday an extra meaningful one. It's not just about toys and technology. It must include much more. Santa and Mrs. Claus exchange knowing glances and then they decide to sleep on it. Tomorrow will be another day. And tomorrow sure is. The Clauses rise early, breakfast heartily, and then Santa goes to his so-called drawing board in his office. Soon his drawing board is filled with pieces of paper with jottings on them. The board is a manual one, not an electronic one, and this board is dotted with thumbtacks and pegs of various colors. And as Mrs. Claus would often joke, Santa's drawing board can only be interpreted by Santa himself and no one else. Santa works feverishly throughout the morning and by lunchtime he has formulated a draft. He needs to call an emergency meeting of family and friends, helpers and reindeer, elves and members of his kids' council. Why is this an emergency? 
because it is the Pope who has made this personal request of him. And Santa will always treat any request from the Pope as very, very important. Moreover, Santa is very impressed by the list of signatories to this letter, not just the Pope and high-profile billionaires, but also high-profile leaders from other religious faiths and royalty as well, and even some very high-profile folks from the entertainment industry. In short, there are over 1,000 signatures to this very important letter. And now it is time to plan an emergency meeting. Santa needs to decide who he wants at this table. And it needs to be those who can help him to carry out this request. He and Mrs. Claus have decided to call this special initiative Fill the World with Peace and Love because this is what this letter is all about because we need to do it because the world is teetering on certain disaster and it can only be saved if peace and love is brought to the world. And who else to do this but Santa Claus and his team? The Pope and his friends strongly believe this as well. And this is why he has sent this urgent request to Santa. And just before the Pope prepares to have supper at the Vatican, his private line buzzes. It is the call that he has been hoping for. The Pope and his caller exchange warm greetings. And minutes later, the Pope is smiling broadly as he seats himself at his supper table. And thousands of miles away, the caller is also smiling. It is time to take the next step. And this is how it is at this very, very moment. Part 2 held in top secrecy and days later Santa is on his way to a top secret meet. No, no virtual meeting for Santa this time because he believes that a face-to-face -face meeting would be a lot safer. He just does not believe or think that or he does not trust technology to protect his need for top secrecy. And this meeting is indeed held in top secrecy. However, it is not as top secret as Santa thinks. Sure, the location is secret and the attendees are, are transported to the location by Santa's copter, okay? But, Every precaution is taken, but somewhere along the line there is a glitch that enables unwanted eyes and ears to attend this meeting. And as they say, something is bound to happen when things are rushed. Santa would later reflect that due to a simple, simple lack of attention to the he forgot to safeguard something very important santa presents the pope's request to the attendees they listen and ponder they understand the urgency of the meat and they know that if something is not done something horrible will happen around the world and it will happen just in time for this year's Christmas holidays. No, Santa and his team to act now and to follow precise plans and a very precise think outside the box 
plan is developed. And this is how it is at this very moment. Part 3. Santa discovers a leak. On the whole, Santa and his team are extremely excited after their meeting. And they are ready to rock and roll. There will be enough time to put the plan into action and an overflow of resources and persons to help carry out the mission. But knowing Santa, he's getting some very uncomfortable vibes that something is about to happen. And thanks to his intuition, he decides to check his office upon his return to the North Pole. He shares his intuition with Mrs. Claus, and together they enter the office and they arrive at the North Pole. At first, everything seems in order, but until they spot something, a large cigarette stain at the top of Santa's large drawing board. And this is the tip-off for Santa and Mrs. Claus, because Santa has always been very, very careful with his precious drawing board, and he would never have left such a stain there. Besides, Santa does not smoke. Santa begins to examine his drawing board more closely and soon he realizes that some of his thumbtacks and paper clips holding various pieces of paper have been rearranged and there is more. One of his iPad, a calculator and paperweight are all missing. Santa and Mrs. Claus shake their heads in dismay and they both realize that someone has been in Santa's office. But who, why, and what have they discovered? Could the mission be in danger of being ruined? Moreover, have the perpetrators been on this mission? What about the Pope and his friends? The iPad or the missing iPad contains information on the Pope and those of his friends who signed this important letter. Despite a very warm summer's eve, Santa is sweating profusely. He takes a deep breath and decides to take a few minutes to assess the situation. Santa sighs heavily and sits in his comfy chair. Mrs. Claus sits close by. They sit in silence for a few minutes and then Santa picks up his phone and makes a long distance call. The call is answered thousands of miles away. The call lasts for no more than two minutes. Santa disconnects and waits anxiously. Then he relaxes just a wee bit as he sees a light flashing on his private line, followed by two loud rings. He does not need to answer this call because he has received confirmation that urgent help is on its way. Batman and Robin are on their way. And this is how it is at this very, very moment. Part 4. Santa shifts gears out of the North Pole. Santa and Mrs. Claus pack quickly. Santa issues urgent instructions to his staff. They go about helping Santa and Mrs. Claus to prepare and they place the North Pole under a lockdown. At around midnight, the special Santa Copter takes off from the special and secret Santa Copter pad. 
Santa and his wife are on their way to meet Batman and Robin, and the Santa Copter flies undetected on their way to the emergency location. It flies undetected. Batman and Robin are waiting as the Santa Copter touches down, and all four folks are whisked into an underground bunker. And it is from there that Santa conducts his business for the next few days. The plans are confirmed. Batman and Robin put top secret security in place and all is almost ready. Santa and his confidants know full well that the leak has not been fully plugged because they do not know exactly who perpetrated the leak and exactly what information was taken and given to whom. Santa has an idea, but in good old Santa terms, he will not act until he has all of the facts. And this is how it is at this very moment. Part 5. Santa takes a stand. Batman and Robin return to their homes and Santa and Mrs. Claus return to the North Pole. Batman and Robin are the code themes for Santa's close friends Marco and Nicholas and these are the names that will be used to identify them for this mission. Batman and Robin have their work cut out for them and they have reassured Santa that they are up for the job and that they will deliver what they have promised. Their promise includes a very secret device which they have just finished testing and much of the world is still yet to see. When Santa arrives back at the North Pole, his staff present him with possibilities as to how and when the leak has taken place. Santa listens and consults with Mrs. Claus and his family and he discusses this with Batman and Robin. The final conclusion is that this leak took place all by accident and that someone else had taken advantage of an innocent glitch. One of Santa's cleaning staff had entered the office to clean, had been fascinated by Santa's drawing board, and had gone over for a look-see. Santa had forgotten to cover down his precious drawing board, so of course it was in plain view. The cleaning staff had become thoroughly engrossed in trying to decipher all of the colorful thumbtacks and paper clips and multiple slips of paper. They had accidentally knocked over some of the thumbtacks and now they had panicked. They tried to rearrange them as to how they had found them, had lit a cigarette while trying to put things back, and they had dropped cigarette ashes at the top of the drawing board. And then the cleaner had fled in haste. The cleaner had been identified. Santa had questioned him and had also discovered that the cleaner had taken a photo of Santa's precious drawing board with his eye device because he had intended to show it to his friends. Too late, he had shown it to his friends and then one of them had decided to post it on Instagram, hoping for some traction. Why not? It was an image of Santa's precious drawing board, wasn't it? And after all, anything about Santa was news, wasn't it? 
This image was seen by a notorious Instagram lurker who made very sure to send it to the right person. That is, the three wise men or the three amigos. And the rest is history. The three amigos were able to use this image to garner enough info to put a devious plan to action. Santa's secret emergency was infiltrated and now Santa decides to take a stand. First, disciplines the cleaner and decides to assign him to a different position on his staff. The cleaner is extremely remorseful. Then the cleaner is sent to the kitchen to be trained as a chef. Then he next uses his special scrambler to scrub all previous information. And then he proceeds to use his resources to make sure that the three amigos start receiving false information. As he would later reflect, these special scramblers and encoders and decoders helped to save the day. And he had to thank Batman and Robin for having provided deep. And this is how it was at this very, very moment. Part 6. Intercepted Phone Call. And these special scramblers and encoders and decoders help Santa and his team to intercept some very important phone calls and to ensure that Santa's phone calls were safely encrypted before being sent. Yes, the three amigos are now working full steam ahead to thwart Santa's latest initiative and they are using Cleaner's image to help them develop their devious plan. Santa, however, is using his very powerful toolkit of, sambler, of scramblers and encoders and decoders to help him out. Keep tabs on his enemies and he knows that he is up against some very determined devious and very, very unconscionable enemies. They are very, very devious foes. Santa is able to intercept phone calls from the three amigos to their friends, and he knows what they are planning. In short, they are planning to send out emails to important leaders around the world and to top international military generals warning them that they are about to be attacked by one of their foreign enemies. Santa also intercepts phone calls from the three amigos instructing their friends to send emails to the Pope and his high-profile friends and to high-profile royalty telling them that they should be on the lookout for threats to their lives. These emails are very, very, I wouldn't say nicely crafted, but they're skillfully crafted and they are all supposedly signed by Santa Claus himself. But Santa is on top of things and Batman and Robin provide him with counter strikes. The important thing here is for Santa to stay on top of things and he needs to be able to destroy these emails before they get to their recipient. And this is how it is at this very, very moment. Part Seven, Santa's enemies strike. And it is now Thanksgiving Day in the United States. And true to form, 
the three amigos strike hard and fast, a bit earlier than expected. And unfortunately, some of their wicked emails do manage to get to their recipients. Oh my. And Santa and his team are forced to work overtime to comfort the recipients who have received these wicked emails that indeed he is not the one who has sent these emails and that they should be ignored. The recipients have been told that Santa's enemies have managed to infiltrate the North Pole and that they are sending out false emails supposedly signed by Santa. This is totally, totally untrue. The emails state the following, that Santa will be using his vast resources to crash the stock market on December the 1st, that the recipient's country will be invaded by a foreign enemy on December the 8th and that there will be a massive cyber attack on December 15th and on December 22nd all major underwater pipelines will be blown to bits and finally on Christmas Eve the world will grow dark. The main mission of the three amigos is to destabilize the world at all costs with their wicked emails. And at first, there is much confusion, great horror, and panic. Some of the world leaders even start to mobilize their troops and military forces in response to these emails and the generals are all placed on immediate high alert and some royalty even take to going into hiding. Oh boy! Almost every leader of every country is on high alert and there is much, much mistrust amongst allies and friends. No one leader seems to know quite what to do. But then some common sense starts creeping in as some of the world's leaders decide to check with their beloved Santa Claus himself. The three amigos were quite resourceful when they decided to send out their emails and signed it as Santa Claus because they correctly assume that if anything, Santa Claus is probably one of the most believable persons in the world. To the naked eye, Santa Claus's signature seems to be very authentic and the email itself has been crafted using Santa's familiar language. The North Pole's logo has been included as well and these emails arrive at the recipient's inboxes the very secure inboxes that only Santa could have had access to yes indeed the North Pole Security Intelligence Center has been hacked And it all started when an overzealous cleaner decided to share images of Santa's prized manual drawing board. Santa realizes the damage now and is brought to tears, but consoling Mrs. Claus and Rudolph, his beloved reindeer, are both there to comfort Santa. For the next few days, Santa, along with Batman and Robin, and his family and North Pole staff, barely sleep. 
everyone is on highest alert and on standby mode. Thanksgiving for this year is in ruins, but Santa has vowed to himself and to Mrs. Claus and to his family, his friends and staff that come hell or high water, this Christmas will not be ruined. Santa's special security team is working overtime and double time, and Batman and Robin are there in the thick of things. Santa talks to his staff, separating them in groups and everyone is made aware of the dire situation. No time to panic. Time to go to work to save the world. And this is how it is at this very, very moment. Part 8. Santa's Counter-Strike Santa goes to great pain to contact each and every world leader to tell them the truth, that the three amigos have hacked his intelligence center and that they have sent out, supposedly signed by Santa. They are all false emails detailing what will take place on December the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd and the 24th that the recipient's country will be invaded by an unidentified foreign enemy on December the 8th. But first, the Wall Street uh, Stock Exchange and all other exchanges will crash and that there will be a massive cyber attack on December the 15th and on December 22nd all major underwater pipelines will be blown to bits and finally on Christmas Eve the world will grow dark. The Pope and his high profile, high profile billionaire friends are all contacted along with all of those royals on the Pope's list. And Santa spends hours and hours talking to each person. It is a lot of work. But Santa's staff, along with Batman and Robin, are there to help. And Santa somehow succeeds in convincing them all that he did not send those emails and that he has a super plan that will stabilize the world. Above all, he is working with a top-notch team to silence the three amigos and to stop them from destabilizing the globe and causing problems. At some point in time, Santa becomes a bit concerned that his financial and personal resources may not be able to carry out all of this and that his security resources may not be able to stem the tide. And this is exactly what the three amigos are counting on. But Santa is extremely resourceful and determined for whereas on the one hand the three amigos are determined to wear down Santa and to deplete his massive resources, Santa is bound and determined not to let this happen. As he would later reflect, this is probably one of the most difficult situations that he has ever had to deal with. But he knows full well that if he fails, the world would never forgive him and that there would be irreversible destruction around the world. Life would never be the same for the world. And the future for everyone would be extremely horrible. And this is how it ends this very, very moment.
Part 9. Help arrives in the nick of time. So as the three amigos work to send out emails predicting the demise of the world and to destabilize the universe, Santa works feverishly to stop them and to reassure the world leaders that he has things in hand and that soon a super secret would be unveiled. Santa continues to be anxious about his personal finances and resources and he begins to worry to Mrs. Claus that they are beginning to dwindle. But she keeps reassuring him that he should focus on what he is doing and that she will take care of business for him. It is now November 30th and time is of the essence. Mrs. Claus knows this only too well and December the 8th is fast approaching when the three amigos have stated that the first invasion will take place. Of course, these wicked men accounting on nations to launch attacks on each other on December the 8th. And Mrs. Claus uses her personal touch and influence to find much needed help. The Pope and his billionaire friend do not disappoint. They provide their deep pockets to Santa along with personal resources and much more. Somehow, Batman and Robin manage to infiltrate the intelligence center of the three amigos, and they, in turn, Batman and Robin, begin to cause chaos for the three amigos. They successfully hack into their control center and they begin to cause chaos for their security systems and their team. And soon emails begin to bounce that are being sent by the three amigos. And then the lights in the compound of the three amigos begin to flicker on the evening of December the 1st. And this is quickly followed by their computer beginning to shut down. The three amigos are now in panic mode and this is how it is at this very, very moment. Part 10. Santa's family and friends race to complete the mission. And as they often say, it, there is never a dull moment when it comes to happenings at the North Pole. And with the December 8th day fast approaching, things are at a boiling point. Teams of reindeer, helpers, elves, kids, and everyone else are beyond being tired as they scurry around following instructions from Santa and Mrs. Claus. But they are bound and determined in this mammoth mission. It is now the morning of December the 3rd and Santa's alarm clock starts chiming. But on this morning, our beloved Santa is finding it very difficult to get out of bed. He struggles for a bit and soon he realizes that his back is the problem. Santa is in great pain and he reaches over to wake Mrs. Claus. Santa's medical doctor is summoned and after examining Santa, he gives Santa and Mrs. Claus the bad news. Santa's back has been put out and this is not the first time that this has happened. The doctor tells his patient that this is very, very serious and that Santa needs immediate bed rest for the next few days. When Santa protests, 
The doctor tells him that if he does not follow instructions, he will need to sedate him in order to stabilize him. Santa is mortified, but Mrs. Claus winks at the doctor. She has something up her sleeve. There is no other way. And the doctor delivers some more bad news. If Santa refuses to follow his orders, chances are certain that he will almost certainly have a relapse. Oh yes, and that it will probably take months and months for Santa to recover. More importantly, he could end up in a wheelchair. The doctor gives Santa an injection that will put him out for a few hours. Then he and Mrs. Claus leave the room, quietly closing the door behind them. <clears throat> Santa is out like a light. Outside in the hallway, the doctor leaves very strict instructions with Mrs. Claus and will check in on Santa in the next three hours. He leaves and Mrs. Claus springs into action. She hatched her emergency plan shortly after this emergency crisis began and now it is time to put it into action. Mrs. Claus picks up the phone and makes just one call. And soon after this, friends and family are on their way to the North Pole. Sandy Claus and cousins Santa's Stoyan and Santa's Stefan arrive within hours. And Batman and Robin arrive not long after. The North Pole is placed under a state of emergency and now Mrs. Claus is in charge. Everyone knows what needs to be done and everyone goes about their business quickly and quietly. Rudolph is by Mrs. Claus's side and the devoted reindeer is a great comfort to his boss's wife. It is practically a race against time, but everyone is confident that they will be able to beat the clock. And as Santa sleeps, things go on. Mrs. Claus, family and friends are all in the zone. It is now December the 6th and just two more days before the first deadline of December the 8th, where Three amigos have informed world countries that their country is going to be invaded. And as Santa remains sedated, life at the North Pole turns on at a maddening pace. But Mrs. Claus is very confident that everything will turn out successfully. And this is how it is at this very, very moment. Part 11. The North Pole is ready and at around noon on December the 7th the breakthrough comes and a deafening cheer echoes around the North Pole as the news spreads that Interpol has arrested the three amigos and that their complex has been shut down. Time for the North Pole to start their cleanup and to get going with their very important mission. All of the world leaders have been kept in the loop and the Pope and his billionaire friends have been alerted and they are now on standby. The royals have also been updated and they too are on standby and ready to do their part. Time for the rollout to start. Drum roll, please. And on the evening of December the 7th, Santa's doctor brings him out of sedation. 
and he is allowed to sit up and take some light foods. Mrs. Claus is by his side and he smiles weakly as Rudolph enters the room with a tray of light snacks for him. Mrs. Claus and Rudolph reassure Santa that everything is okay. They tell him that the three amigos have been arrested and that their complex has been shut down, has been shut down. And Santa is allowed just one more visitor. Oh yes, the Pope himself who enters the room and walks to Santa's bedside, blesses Santa, squeezes his hand and prays with him for a minute or two. Then he leaves and Mrs. Claus and Rudolph watch Santa as he tries to eat a bit. They leave him and then he is left to continue his rest. Poor Santa is very weak, but he is still smiling as he rests in bed because he knows that all is good. Mrs. Claus, Rudolph and his family have everything in hand and that Batman and Robin are taking care of business. And now it is time to prepare for some happy days. Yes, indeed. Happy days are here again and it is going to be the loveliest time of the year. And this is how it is at this very, very moment. Part 12. Heaven and Earth Rejoice. Santa returns to life in time to see everything come to fruition. He is still recovering, but the smile on his face tells it all. And the Pope's request has been fulfilled. And Batman and Robin have helped enormously to make it all come true. The world watches in awe as practically millions and millions of white doves descend on troubled parts of the world with one simple message. Quote, help us bring peace to the world, unquote, and it is signed by Santa Claus. Batman and Robin came up with this idea in response to the Pope's request. Millions of persons worldwide saw, either saw these me mechanical birds carrying these messages or they received these messages themselves. In short, during those days leading up to Christmas Eve, the entire world was blanketed in mechanical white doves flying quickly around and depositing these before soaring away high in the sky and off to deliver more of their messages. The world simply could not believe what was taking place. And now everyone was anxiously waiting to see what would happen next. Indeed, for the next few days, almost everyone, everywhere, in all countries and in all corners of the world, were taken up talking about those white doves and their messages. Many were moved or simply moved by that short and very simple message. Others hurried outdoor to see these white doves going about their business. And still others tried to capture one or two of these white doves. But they could not do so because these doves were simply too quick and they were equipped with bulletproof feathers so that they could not be shot down as one media outlet aptly described this. It was like a massive blanket of thick white doves covering the world. A massive thick white blanket of covering the world. While others described it as simply doves delivering their messages. 
kids and stop their activities to look up at the doves flying by. Soldiers were too amazed to do anything but to retrieve the messages and to read them. Of course, there were some of those who were very skeptical, but somehow they were being convinced, and soon they too were ready to do their part. Yes, Batman and Robin had hatched the idea, and the Pope's billionaire friends had provided the financial resources to make it all happen, and Santa's North Pole team had helped to plan it all. And as midnight struck, in countries around the world, all news media started to report the remarkable and unbelievable events taking place. It was live, and it rolled across the globe like a gigantic tsunami. The world watched with open mouths as soldiers laid down their arms. Terrorists and gangs also put down their weapons, and one by one, world leaders publicly announced peace treaty and climate change and other important treaties. The internet and social media were both simply inundated with images of these white doves flying high and soldiers, terrorists and gangs laying down their arms. Church bells rang out. Horns sounded everywhere. Fireworks lit up the skies, ships blew their horns, sailors stood on ship decks and saluted, radio stations repeatedly played the carol, joy to the world, and Michael Jackson's Christmas song, Sunday at Christmas, and cheers echoed everywhere, and not to be outdone, the moon shone extra brightly and millions of stars could in the sky. The Pope celebrated this huge event with a special public mass. The royals stood on their respective balconies and toasted much needed food and clothes magically appeared in those less fortunate countries and kids and their parents swarmed streets, saluting and singing, laughing and leaping for joy. Firecrackers were going off everywhere. Even Mother Nature and her kingdom of animals, birds and fishes were celebrating as well. In short, something that was never seen before by the world. And as everyone late, would later reflect, so unexpected, so very welcoming, so much needed, so relieving. Jungles echoed with animals greeting each other. The forest also echoed with animals greeting each other. Large flocks of birds took to the skies to meet and greet each other, and fishes of the sea swam in large schools, also greeting each other. They leapt in mid-ocean. Santa sat watching his huge monitors and smiling broadly from his easy chair, with his dogs, Yelly and Hamish, beside him, along with Mrs. Claus. The North Pole was in full celebration mode. And to make it so surreal, Santa's greeting of ho, 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 peace on earth and Merry Christmas reverberated in all corners of the world. And in every country of the world, Santa's greetings were translated in hundreds and hundreds of languages and broadcasted to all corners of the globe. Peace 
and joy had finally come to the world, it was time to celebrate the end. I hope you enjoyed my 12 Days of Christmas box set number two as much as I enjoyed writing and producing them. And I'd like to thank my friends Matt Maynard in Ottawa, Canada, for having put all of this together for me, and my good friend Erin DeBlazy in Ohio, Apes, for having helped to circulate them, and my good friend in Montreal, my little brother, Mike Chicello, for having composed the intros to these episodes. Thank you, everybody. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Joyeux Noël, Feliz Navidad, Happy Hanukkah, Buen Natale, everything that I could think of that is good. I wish you all. Take care and the very best for the new year. <laughs>